What's going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and the next episode in my weapon workshop tutorial series. This is the series where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you, all the way up to the main most efficient combos you should be using and some overarching weapon theory. If you guys missed the first episode then I went over how to use the charge blade and over the course of the next few weeks I'll be putting together guides for each of the 14 weapons in Monster Hunter World and today we're continuing that by turning our attention to the bow. The bow is one of the three ranged weapons in Monster Hunter World and I've always said that if you're looking to get into ranged weapons in Monster Hunter Especially if you're coming over from a melee weapon, then bow is the weapon you'll feel most at home with at first. It offers great mobility, a wide array of both damage and status options, and thanks to some of the new additions and changes in world, bow has never felt better and truly is an incredibly fun weapon to use. Where melee weapons offer depth and complexity through their varying combos, bow, and by extension the other ranged weapons, offer that through the various coatings or ammo types, providing you with a wide range of ways to play. Now, before we dive in and go over all of the core moves and combos for the bow, there's a couple of things you need to understand first. To begin with, bows in Monster Hunter World have changed. In previous games, different bows would offer different shot types, and then in Generations, the most recent handheld entry in the series, bows were brought a little more in line, allowing all bows to use both arc and power shots, something we'll speak about shortly. But different bow types did still offer different types of arc shots. This meant that not only did you have to pick your bows based on the coatings that they supported, but you also had to factor in the shot type which ultimately limited your choices. Thankfully in World that is no longer the case. All bows have access to all moves, so the only thing you need to worry about when picking a bow are the coatings that it supports. When you go to craft or upgrade a bow at the smithy, you can see the list of supported coatings on the right over here. Anything greyed out cannot be used on that particular bow. I'm not going to go over all the coatings right now since most of them are pretty self-explanatory but what I will say is the power coating if you're looking to deal damage will become one of your bread and butter coatings. Most bows support this by default but not all of them and while you shouldn't necessarily discount a bow if it doesn't support power coating if you're starting out with the bow then having access to this will come in handy. In addition to this one very important thing you need to understand about all ranged weapons in Monster Hunter is a concept known as critical distance. Put simply, this is the optimal distance you want to be at in order to maximise your damage. In previous games this was displayed by a subtle screen shake on landing the shot, but in World it just got a whole lot easier to tell. When aiming your bow, a reticle will appear on screen. If you're too far away from the monster, this will say out of range, and quite simply, your shots won't land. However, move a little closer and you'll get a yellow circle. From here, your shots will land, but you're still not at critical distance, meaning you're missing out on damage. Move a little closer again and you'll see a second circle appears in the middle. This is critical distance. The distance is actually a little bit more forgiving in world so you have a little bit of leeway to essentially move around but when using this weapon this is what you always want to see. Sure there might be the odd time where you're rolling away and you land a shot out of the optimal range but generally speaking this is what you want to aim for. Try to remain in critical distance at all times, this will ensure that you're doing the most damage and if you're using status coatings it also means your status application is as efficient as possible. It is worth noting that the power coatings have a different critical distance to the close range coatings but given that the reticle on the screen tells you if you're in or out that's really something that you can just react to on the fly. So with all of that covered now let's turn our attention to the moves. First things first, holding down L2 with your weapon drawn will bring up your aiming reticle. You don't have to use this, you can fire shots without it, but it's incredibly useful not only to gauge your critical distance, but also just to ensure that you're shooting the right spots. So for the moves we're about to go over, I'm just going to always be holding down L2 to aim. Holding down L1 and pressing either triangle or X will allow you to scroll up and down through your coatings list and then pressing triangle on its own once you have the one you want will apply it. This little icon over here means it's applied. Note that from this point onwards, any shot will use this coating and gradually deplete the number. So if you want to conserve your coatings, you can press triangle again to unequip them. You can fire shots without coatings, but it's also important to note that all bows have an unlimited close range coating too. You need to be a little bit closer to use them, hence the name, but shots using close range coatings will do more damage than shots without any coatings at all. Pressing R2 will fire a single arrow, and this is by far your weakest shot. However, if you hold down R2, you can charge up your shots. Charging your shots will use stamina, so be mindful of this. If you run out of stamina, 
you'll automatically let go of the shot. By default, a bow has two levels of charge. Your first shot, then you charge up once, and then a second time. You can see it pulsing each time. There are some bows that have additional levels of charge, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we're working with what is available on most bows by default. Each level of charge does more damage than the last, and if you're trying to apply status effects to a monster, this is especially important. The more damage you do, the stronger the application and the further your coatings will go. So if you're looking to paralyze, poison, or even sleep a monster, it's worth taking your time to charge up. The same could be said for power coatings, but as you'll see in a moment, there are some sacrifices that can be made in order to maximize your DPS. However, holding R2 to charge isn't the only way to get to the higher tier charges. New to Monster Hunter World is the Rapid R2 combo. If you press R2 three times consecutively, each subsequent shot automatically jumps up to the next level of charge, so level 1, 2, and then 3. And if you then compare the two options, either holding to charge or rapid shot, in the time that you would have charged up to your second level of charge, you've instead been able to put more shots into the monster, and the overall total damage output is much higher in that short space of time. Yes, each of those individual shots has used one of your coatings, and thus you could argue that it's not as efficient in the long run, but if we're talking about quick burst damage, this is the new kid on the block. Now I want to take a moment to emphasize this, because understandably, if you've played Monster Hunter before and you've used bow, this is the polar opposite to the way we've used the weapon up until this point, and I've seen a fair bit of discussion with regards to which method is actually the best option. Running in the background are two identical hunts in the arena. One of them is done using the traditional bow gameplay from previous games where you charge up to level 3 to get out your shots. Meanwhile the other one is the new rapid fire method and you'll see that the rapid fire option does get the job done quicker. Now yes, as mentioned, you do go through more coatings this way and if you're trying to calculate maximum possible damage, sure, charging up every shot means you're getting the most out of your coatings across a long period of time. But in combat, the focus should be on high burst damage, damage in a small window. This is where the new rapid combo excels, and it's probably one of the most drastic changes to the weapon's playstyle. You also need to factor in that all bows have unlimited close range coatings too, and while these don't dish out as much damage as power coatings, they are more powerful than uncoated arrows. So even if you do rip through your coatings faster using this new rapid combo, you have something to fall back on. So dialing it back a second, as a general rule of thumb, if your focus in combat at that moment is status, then slow down your gameplay and go for those max charge shots to ensure maximum efficiency and to allow your status coatings to go much further. Meanwhile, if your focus is damage, then this is where the new rapid combo comes into play. Following on from that, holding R2 and pressing circle will allow you to fire out an arc shot. This will rain down shots on the target location in front of you, and these shots deal impact damage if they land on the monster's head, so it is indeed possible to KO a monster using this move. A couple of other important things to note. First up, this shot does not apply or use your coatings, so it won't apply status effects, nor will it be buffed by power or close range coatings. Secondly, the duration of the rain can be increased if you perform an arc shot following a charge. So this is a regular arc shot with no charge. This is an arc shot following a level 1 charge. And this is an arc shot following a level 2 charge. So if you have the opening, it pays to do this. Also, if you want to aim where the arc shots land, you can hold down L2, R2 and circle, and then use the right stick to aim where it will land. Moving on from there, pressing circle once performs a quick shot, and this fires a spread of arrows. Rather interestingly, this shot, if all three arrows land, deals more damage than a single uncharged R2 shot. So as you'll see later when we start talking about combos, this is actually a better way to open than a regular R2. However, following that, pressing circle three times will go from a quick shot into a power shot, and then into an arc shot. And much like the rapid R2 combo, each shot levels up, meaning your ending arc shot is at max charge for the maximum possible range. Now the power shot that we just performed in the second shot, that is a very interesting and important move. You can also perform a power shot by pressing circle after an R2 shot. What a power shot does is that it fires out a spread shot that is one level higher than the previous shot, up to a point. So if you press R2 circle, the first shot is a regular shot, the power shot is charge level 1. If you press circle after the first charge, then the power shot is the final level charge, unless of course you have a bow with an additional level charge. And if you fire once you've got the max charge shot, it'll simply maintain a max charge on the next power shot too. So you then get to the point where you can work it in at the end of your rapid R2 combo, and you can even work in an arc shot after that, followed by another power shot, but we'll go over that properly once we talk about the core combos. 
Pressing triangle and circle together does your dragon piercer attack. This is a powerful shot that dishes out good damage and it's also good at breaking parts on a monster. Much like the arc shot, it also benefits from charge, so performing a dragon piercer from idle isn't as powerful as a dragon piercer following a max level charge. You can even see, based on how much your hunter gets knocked back, the max charge version is noticeably more powerful. It's also worth calling out that yes, dragon piercer shots do use coatings, so they do benefit from the likes of power coating and close range coating. And while yes, that also means you could paralyze or poison a monster using this too, it's nowhere near as efficient or fast as using regular charged shots. So dragon piercer should be used for damage, meanwhile charged shots are your slater suppliers. Pressing X will then perform a little back hop, useful if you need to reposition slightly, but more exciting is the charging sidestep. Holding L2 and pressing X will perform a sidestep, this offers a small window of invulnerability whilst dashing, but in the process you also charge up your shot one level. You can also do this by pressing X after a shot too, so if you wanted to charge up to max level quickly, dashing twice like this is much faster than simply holding R2 to charge. Do however keep in mind that this uses a lot of stamina, so it's not always viable. What you might instead consider doing is charging manually to the first level, then sneaking a dash in. This speeds up the process a little bit and isn't quite the stamina intensive. Also, if you're going to do this a lot, you might want to invest in an armor skill like Constitution, which reduces stamina depletion when performing stamina draining moves like evading. In addition to this, following a charging sidestep, you can press triangle to perform the lunging melee attack. This can be used to mount a monster, and it can also be looped indefinitely if you want to. Finally, a quick note on aerial attacks. If you perform a charging sidestep into a runnable surface like a mushroom wall, you will run up and perform this flashy wall shot. You don't really aim it per se, it just fires behind you, but it can be useful if a monster is, say, chasing you into a wall or a corner. And of course, on top of that, jumping off a ledge and pressing triangle performs a swipe with your arrow, and pressing or holding R2 after jumping off a ledge allows you to fire off or charge a shot. You can also hold down R2 while sliding down a hill to draw into a shot, but sadly there aren't any crazy Legolas style sliding moves for the bow. But that is it for the bow moves. As you can see, considerably fewer moves to worry about when compared to a melee weapon, but plenty of awesome things to work with. So, now let's talk about the combos. You've seen all the moves, you know what they do, but how do you tie it all together? Well, let's start with the damage. If you want to kick out the highest DPS, then there's really one core flow you'll be working with, paired with a few alterations that can be worked into either the beginning or the end. First up, pressing R2 three times, followed by three circle inputs, will perform your rapid R2 combo, followed by a max level power shot, max level arc shot, and another max level power shot. This is fast, dishes out great damage, and since you're working the arc shot in, it also has some added utility in that there's a good chance you can flinch or even KO the monster. You can also change that up by swapping the first R2 input with a circle input. I mentioned earlier that the circle quick shot does more damage than the basic R2 shot provided all the spread arrows land. So if you're fighting something with a larger surface area, then circle R2 R2 circle 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 is actually better for damage. On top of that, if the monster is down and therefore the need for arc shot is lessened, you can instead drop the final two inputs and go straight into a dragon piercer. So circle R2 R2 circle triangle plus circle. This will ensure that your Dragon Piercer is also at max charge, doing the most damage, and it means that every shot in that combo benefits from your coating, ideally power coating, and after that you can then loop back around and do it again. Dragon Piercer does take a little bit of time to fire out, so it won't always be viable, but should the opportunity present itself, this is for sure a combo you want to be using. It's also worth noting that Dragon Piercer can be used even if you have no stamina. So if you really want to go all out and you have a big enough window, you can actually sneak a Dragon Piercer into the end of the first or second high DPS combos. And since it follows the max level power shot, it's also max level. This would without a doubt be your highest damage combo. But note that there are a lot of shots to factor into this. So it's not something you'll always be able to take advantage of. So the first and second high DPS combos are generally speaking more viable in average gameplay situations, but if you should have a large enough opening, then this is your maximum damage combo. And of course, as mentioned earlier, if your focus during a particular moment in a hunt instead switches to status, then slow down your gameplay, lean back into the more methodical charge shots, and this will ensure that every shot counts, you'll apply the status faster, and you can make your coatings last longer, in turn opening up the monster to multiple paralysis or sleep phases in one fight. The abnormal status tolerance does of course get bigger each time, so it'll take more shots the second or third time, but if you're sparing with your coatings, you might just be able to pull it off. Plus, you can always craft more on the fly. 
So in summary, the bow is an incredible weapon offering great mobility as well as high damage output and also great status options. On the surface, it might not seem as powerful when focusing on the individual damage numbers, but let me tell you, the bow can do some serious damage in the right hands. It's also one of the most melee friendly ranged weapons, while both the bow guns are an absolute blast to use and are so much easier to pick up than they were in previous games, I've got to say that if you've been thinking about giving ranged weapons a try, you'll likely feel right at home with the bow. But for the time being, that's all I have to teach you. That is everything from the basic moves all the way up to the core combos you should be using to ensure you're doing the most possible damage or applying your statuses in the most efficient way at any given moment. If you have any questions, by all means let me know. If you missed the charge blade tutorial from last week, be sure to check it out, link down below. And of course, keep it locked for more weapon workshops very soon. If you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful, a like would be super appreciated. And thank you for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.